So to your playing career, I mean, uh, you know, obviously you're known for that SI cover with oh, shattering yeah. the backboard. Um, do you, I presume you have a copy of it? Or? Oh yeah, it's several. several. <laughs> <laughs> Those that I still have that I didn't give away. You know, I, I my grandma, they sent me a big, huge picture of it and I gave it to my grandmother. You know, I really don't, you know, my playing career was what it was, but I, I don't constantly walk around trying to relive it. Right. You know, I just, I'm on to the next thing, man. I'm on to the next thing. It's just like when it, it was great, we made history, won a championship, but that was like, what, seven, eight years ago. So right. now you got to constantly be ready for that new, that next challenge, that new goal. But at the same time, it was a special, special moment. Yeah, for can me. you take me through that moment? Yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, being in a tournament, um, being a relatively unheard of team, even though we were ranked in the top 10 at the time. Right. Uh, playing North Carolina, you know, probably arguably the best program in the history of college basketball. Look at some of the players that's come out of there. Um, you know, it was just a moment that no one expected. And that play actually, when I did that, it tied the game up. I mean, we were going back and forth and, you know, they had Jeff McGinnis, Vince Carter, Antoine Jamerson, uh, Shamar Williams. They had about five NBA players on that team. So. Right. I mean, it was just an exciting, very exciting moment. Um, gave my teammates a lot of energy, and uh, we relished it. You know, people always talk about breaking the back, but we beat them by 20. And uh, tell John Houston, Mitch Cupcheck, I said so, that. You didn't say that to them, <laughs> to them at all? Yeah, Mitch told me yesterday, I guess they had to write up in the L.A. Times, and they showed that picture. He said the picture was grainy. <laughs> and he said, you know what that means, Darwin? I said, yeah, I'm getting old, man. I'm getting old. <laughs> so... Yeah, you know, it's great being around those guys. Uh, most of my closest friends are from, you know, the Carolina program. J.R. Reed, uh, She Wallace, Jeff McGinnis, you know, a lot. Stackhouse, I, I played golf and ate in their homes and, and had a good time. Some of my favorite coaches, two of my favorite coaches, George Carl and Larry Brown, are both from Carolina. So it's a sick relationship, to say the least. Now, I know reflecting <laughs> on your, uh, your, your career in the NBA, yeah. it, it, you recall the one quote that really stuck out to you that Larry Brown was saying that every team yeah. needs a Darvin Ham. Yeah. When he said that, first off, what did that mean to you? Uh, you know, I, I was never, I wasn't drafted, first of all, um, and I ended up playing close to 10 years, which is, you know, my, my health, you know, I had injuries that forced me to shut it down, but, you know, just, just him saying that, just, and the players he, he's coached and the type of teams he, he's assembled, um, it was special to me because it lets me know that I was a hard worker, I was a good teammate. Um, and every day, you know, he knew what he was going to get from me, you know, uh, it, regardless of the skill level. Uh, coaches are very comfortable when they know that they, what they're going to get from a player on a consistent basis, be it practice, shoot around, games, whatever. So, you know, it, it was, it was coach is a Hall of Fame coach and I'm honored to have played for him. And, to be able to pick up the phone and call him to this day. You know, I called him when I was going in, about to come in for this job, and he gave me, you know, some some advice and, and, and helped me with the, through my D-League coaching career. So coach has always been there for me whenever I needed him and uh, willing to give good, good advice and, and, and good life lessons. What kind of advice has he given you in that respect? Um, just just to always be loyal, uh, you know, to surround yourself with good people. Um, and to work your butt off, man. Never take anything for granted. And always be willing, willing to help and, and, and help people get better. Uh, he was a big proponent of that. Just, you know, regardless of, I know when I was playing for him, regardless of where you were in your basketball career, be it a young guy, middle, you know, middle of the pack or older guy, he always encouraged people to get better and work on that game. And the same with coaching. You know, he always encouraged me to, read books and or, or, you know, go talk to this guy, talk to that guy, pick up whatever you can learn and do it. But first and foremost, be a good person, be a reliable person and be a loyal person. Right. And if, from what I understand, uh, that's kind of what you passed on in your when you were coaching in Albuquerque. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had guys that, you know, I I'd, I'd make them understand and I would tell them, listen to the message, not the way it's being delivered. Uh, you know, D-League is a crazy, crazy league. It's a great league, but at the same time, I, I think if you can coach in that league, you can coach pretty much anywhere because of the turnover of your roster. You got guys constantly leaving to go overseas or getting called up or, you know, new guys coming into the pool that you want to take a look at. So, you know, it's, and you only have 10 on your team. So 
it's 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 crazy. It's hard to find any sense of uh, consistency. So you really have to have a good coaching plan and 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 really have be in tune and communicate with your players. Right.